And now we're beginning part two with the title, If I Run, Here's How I Do It. And some of you recall from yesterday, this session is an opportunity for those who are thinking about running for leader of the Conservative Party of Canada to address the conference, to uh, tell us a little bit about themselves, why they're thinking of writing and uh, running, and why they think, uh, what they think needs to be done to recharge the right. As I noted yesterday, we sent out uh, invitations to everyone who's mused publicly in the media about running for leader. Uh, six potential candidates initially agreed to speak, although we just heard a couple of days ago that Dr. Kelly Leach uh, has to be on call this weekend, so unfortunately she couldn't be with us. As a result, we rejigged our schedule. Yesterday, Kevin O'Leary and Michael Chong spoke, and today we will hear from Maxime Bernier, uh, Tony Clement, and Lisa Ray. So uh, yesterday I noted that in an ideal world we would have had all five uh, speakers address our conference on the same day, but because of scheduling that was not possible and that's why we have two sessions. So let's get started and just as we did yesterday, each speaker will be given 10 minutes to speak and then when they're done I'll have a brief uh, uh, five minute, maybe to even 10 minutes because we've got a uh, little more time discussion with uh, them one on one. And a clock on stage will show how long each candidate has remaining. We drew names and uh, we'll go first with Maxime and then, uh, or actually we went alphabetically, we'll go with Maxime and then Tony and then Lisa. So Maxime Bernier was first elected to the House of Commons in 2006 with the largest majority of any candidate outside Alberta. He was appointed to cabinet on February 6, 2006 as uh, Minister of Industry and subsequently became Minister of Foreign Affairs and Minister of State for Small Business and Tourism. Prior to becoming a Member of Parliament, he was Vice President of the Standard Life of Canada Insurance Company and uh, uh, a Manager of, a corporate, of Corporate and International Affairs at the Commission de Valeur Mobilière du Québec. So Maxime, will you please come up and we're looking forward to what you have to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you very much for this opportunity. Bonjour, uh, chers amis, dear friends, good afternoon. It's very nice to see uh, everyone here this afternoon. And let me get right to the question we were asked. So, if I decide to run, how will I do it? The answer is very clear in my mind. I will run a campaign based on substance and ideas. The old, yes, that's, that's why I'm in politics. I'm in politics to defend and promote conservative values. And I grew up with these conservative values. They are who I am. Je suis de la Beauce, au Québec. C'est une région qui est reconnue comme étant la plus entrepreneuriale du Québec. I'm from Beauce, a region that is well known as the most entrepreneurial in Quebec. This is where I learn, this is where I learn the values that go with entrepreneurship. Individual freedom, personal responsibility, self-reliance, integrity. But of course, these are also universal values, values that, had a, that ha, values that are at the core of Western civilization, values that have made this country prosperous and a great place to live. There is a large constituency for these uh, small government principles. Many people who don't necessarily consider themselves conservative and who did not vote for us are fed up with a big government over borrowing and overspending. A big government trying to manage our lives from the cradle to the grave. And, and we can safely bet they will be even more fed up four years from now. However, I find that we conservatives have not always been keen on openly defending 
these small government principles. Let's take the issue of corporate subsidies. Free market economists unanimously decry them as inefficient and a waste of taxpayers' money. They are also grossly unfair. They favor some businesses at the expense of others. They create a constant demand for government intervention in the economy. I'm pretty sure today that almost everyone in this room understand that instead of ending out government grants, we should reduce taxes and provide a more favorable environment to all businesses. Like that, everyone will benefit. <clears throat> if there is only, only one conservative economic policy that absolutely everyone in this room should support, this is it. And, but yet during uh, the 10 years that we were in power, our government continued to provide billions of dollars in support to businesses. Why? Why? Were we afraid? It is not enough to know that the policy is bad. We also have to explain why. Explain it again and again if we want the majority of Canadians to understand and support the change of policy. Otherwise, we are forced to compromise, to dilute our policies, and to contradict our principles. And you know that in every survey, politicians as a group are way down the list in terms of public confidence. I think one reason for that is that one reason that people are so cynical is that they don't believe us. They don't see us as defending clear goals and principles or acting on these principles. And it's simple. If we want conservative principles to win the battle, we have to defend them openly with passion and with conviction. And we should not be afraid. We should not be afraid of saying the hard truths that need to be said. I can tell you, I'm not afraid. Last November, when Bombardier came knocking at the door of the federal government to ask for another billion of dollars in help, I instead proposed to abolish all government subsidies to businesses. GM in Ontario asked for subsidies also at the same time. I said GM should not receive any money from the government. I'm willing to say the same thing whichever company or region is involved. Several years ago, when I raised the issue of equalization, I was attacked by most of the political class in Quebec. Quebec has been receiving more than half of the equalization money, the, the money that is in the equalization program for years. And I said to Quebecers that I was not proud. I was not proud of that. I was not afraid to say that to my fellow Quebecers because I want us to find a solution to this poor economic performance. Many Quebecers share my concerns, and today it is not taboo anymore to ra raise this issue in Quebec. But you know what? Manitoba and three Atlantic provinces get even more equalization money per capita than Quebec, and so are even more dependent on Ottawa. Today, can we say that too? Instead of beating around the bush 
Uh, can we be frank and open about the real situation? And for me, the point is not to stigmatize some provinces. It is to recognize the problems so that we can address them. There is no other way. We must have a relevant discussion about what policies need to be changed to be fair to all parts of our country and to bring prosperity to all parts of our country. At the time when Alberta, Saskatchewan, Newfoundland and Labrador are hurting because of the crash in the oil sector, when the government of Ontario is burdening the country's largest economy with more taxes and more debt, we cannot, we cannot afford to be complacent. We conservatives have to show to everyone that we have solution. <laughs> and for me, it is not solutions involving Ottawa redistributing more money from some regions to others, but solution based on a freer economy on responsibility and fairness. So, if I decide to run, what kind of candidate will I be? First of all, I will reach out to all of our conservative members, to all Canadians. I will listen and talk to them dans les deux langues officielles. One of our colleagues, uh, Kevin O'Leary, said in, a, in an interview a couple of weeks ago that he didn't need to learn French to become prime minister of our country. He said he's always been amused by politicians who take French classes and try to speak French in Quebec City when everyone answered them in English. Well, Kevin, when you go to restaurant and tourist places in Quebec City. Of course, people will answer you in English as they do in Amsterdam, Vienna, and Rome. They want your business. <laughs> it, it doesn't mean that you can govern Italy without speaking Italian. <laughs> I can tell you, when I visit every region of our great country, I won't be a tourist. I won't be a tourist. I want to be a unifying candidate. <laughs> Quebec was a bright spot for our party in the last election. It was the only province where we increased our number of seats from five to 12, yes. <laughs> but, but there is 66 more seats to contest. Yes. And I can tell you that I can sell conservative ideas to Quebecers and to all Canadians. <clears throat> Many years ago, a journalist, a journalist that I like, Describe me as the Albertan from Quebec. <laughs> because, because I sounded like a Western conservative, despite my bad accent. <laughs> but there is actually no such thing as a Western conservative or a Quebec conservative or an Atlantic one. There are only conservatives. And if I decide to run, it will be to reaffirm that only the Conservative Party of Canada can ensure that we will be a secure, profit secure and also a prosperous and stable country. But also, I want to fire up 
the imagination of Canadians, which are much, much, are much more free, prosperous, successful, we could become if we apply our values more consistently. That's how I will do it if I decide to run. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you. Well, thank you, Maxim. And I want to pick up on maybe just a couple of points that you made. You, you rightfully pointed out that one of the bright spots in the last federal election was the increase in support in the number of seats won in Quebec. And I wonder if you might just tell us to, to what you attribute that, and uh, maybe more generally, what does the party have to do to strengthen itself, particularly in, in Quebec? But first of all, it was a great achievement. You know, we more than double of our seat in Quebec. And uh, it's because we, we had the right uh, message to Quebecers. First, uh, we believe in NGO freedom, and Quebec, they like lower taxes and less government. And also, all our uh, topic on the, uh, the Constitution. Uh, you know, we don't want to reopen the Constitution, but our government, in the last 10 years, we were the one who respect the Constitution. And Quebecers, they like that. They don't like a federal government who will interfere in provincial jurisdiction. So it is important for them, and it was something that we did, and I hope we'll do that in the future also. And also, we had a great organization, good people on the ground. So I think next time we have a lot of room to have more seat if we stay uh, on our principles. So less government, lower taxes, respect the Constitution, uh, respect the taxpayers, so we must uh, have a policy that will be uh, based on these values and will be successful in Quebec in the near future. What's your assessment of the, I mean, the Liberals have strength there too, but what's the greatest weakness of the federal Liberal Party in Quebec? <clears throat> but what they're doing right now, you know, with the budget, and <laughs> they think that the budget, <laughs> like, you, yeah, like everybody are saying, the budget doesn't balance itself. So, and right now we have the, the, the government that are spending money that we don't have. Quebecers understand that. The credit card of the federal government is full. It is not time to spend money when we are uh, not in a recession. Uh, we're supposed to have 1 1.2, 1.5% growth in this country next year. And, um, and when you do that, Quebecers understand that at the end you're gonna mm -hmm. tax them. And I don't like taxes, and my fellow Quebecers <laughs> don't like, they don't like taxes also. So we must have a government that will respect the Constitution. And now what they're doing, the Liberal right now, they're interfering in education. And we all know that education is a provincial jurisdiction. Yeah. They will uh, interfere also in daycare. Daycare is a provincial jurisdiction. So it is not looking good for the future for yeah. with our relationship yeah. with other uh, provinces. And also they want to impose some condition for transferring money for health care. And we know that health care is a provincial jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah. So we transfer money to all the provinces, but without any condition, because we know that's their jurisdiction. So uh, that, can be, that can be very difficult for the Liberal Party yeah, in the yeah, near future yeah. on, that, on this subject. Yeah, I can think that na national unity problems increase in direct proportion to the number of federal provincial conferences that are held. So I, I'm worried about this next one they're going to have. But picking up on, on one other point that you made uh, uh, very strongly about uh, trying to get businesses off, uh, off subsidies and, and uh, uh, a number of the provinces off equalization, well, how do you handle a transition on that? Like, th this is, in a sense, it's the welfare trap. There's a a dependency has been built up on the part of corporations, on the part of uh, the recipients of equalization. H how do you get from that to a, a less dependent system? What's the transition? Uh, first of all, I will speak about uh, corporate subsidies, and after that, maybe the equalization. But corporate subsidies, I think, uh, you know, it's easy for us politicians to uh, have a policy that will be fair for every entrepreneur, every businesses. So I don't think that an entrepreneur from St. George de Beauce in my own writing, they're willing to give their taxes to billionaire. 
and the same thing for the middle class. So if we want to be fair for everybody, you just abolish this kind of direct subsidies to businesses and you lower taxes to corporation and individual. So like that, you're fair with everybody. And you know, the best argument that they have when, you, when, when a, c a corporation came and asked money uh, at the federal door, uh, the best argument that they had, you know, you gave money to GM, you gave money to other one, now it's my turn. So it's, it's a little bit difficult to answer that because we didn't have a principal position. We need to have a principal position and saying in a platform, we will abolish all that, and, but we will reduce your taxes. I think that must be the thing to do on the corporate side. Uh, for the equalization, uh, the equalization, you know, it's there. It is in the Constitution. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's important, and it's a way for Canadians to have the same services uh, depending, uh, the same services if they're in Quebec or in Victoria or in BC. Uh, so, uh, uh, but the formula, the federal government have a control of the formula. It is not in the constitution. So I think we must sit together and have a discussion about that formula uh, to be sure that uh, everybody will be able to be prosper. And uh, with the formula right now, uh, it, is not, it is not always fair. Uh, as you know, natural resources mm -hmm. are not in the same if, it's, if yeah. you're uh, exploiting some natural resources and other, others, uh, it is not the same treatment in the formula. So we must have an open discussion on that. And we must, must, we must not be afraid to put that on the table and having a discussion for the good of all the country and all Canadians. And uh, if I'm running, I <laughs> that would be, <laughs> That will be a debate that I want to have, okay. and we'll have time to discuss more in detail about what kind of formula will be the right one to bring prosperity to all parts of our country. Okay. Now you're, uh, like you, you are, and you've been very strong on the uh, on conservative positions on economic issues and fiscal issues. Are, are there other areas where you feel the application of conservative values and principles have to be expanded in order to increase the, the reach and appeal of, of conservative principles? For, we have to be proud of what we uh, did in, on foreign affairs. I think our position, it's a conservative uh, position, it's a principled position, fighting against ISIS and being there, being present at the international scene. It is very important. And uh, uh, what uh, my colleague, uh, Tony Clement, is doing as a critic right now, uh, that's a great position. And I think we must, uh, we must speak to people and continue to have that kind of position. We, we are proud, we are Canadian, we have something to achieve. Uh, at the international scene, and I think Canadians want us to combat ISIS uh, abroad and to be sure that we'll have a secure country here in Canada. So that's a great position that we had, and we must continue on that direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So foreign policy would be a big area of expansion. Yeah, right? foreign yeah. policy, yeah. we yeah. must explain that to Canadians, and I, I think we have a great support on that position okay. In, okay. in Canada. So it's, we, we, must, we, we, we don't okay. need to change okay. that. It's, okay. it's a conservative, it's, it's, it's in us. Okay, now uh, you know because you've been across the country that there are various flavors of conservatism across yeah. the country. There, there are uh, libertarians, there are fiscal conservatives, there are social conservatives, there are democratic sort of bottom-up conservatives, particularly on the prairies. There's uh, constitutional conservatives that want a more decentralized country. There's uh, in British Columbia, there's polarized conservatives that, are, that believe in polarization and get left and right and be at one end of the right end of the pole. For a national party, one of the challenges, of course the challenges for a national leader is to find the common ground among these various flavors of conservatism so they can work together. What, what's your thoughts on where that common ground might, I know it's not a, that's not an easy question. But I think the common ground will be about uh, the strong value of uh, personal liberty and, uh, and responsibility. I think the social conservative, they, they like that and all the other conservative. You know, we fight for a smaller government and we mo have to explain to every conservative and every Canadian, what do, we t what do you want with a smaller government? What is the impact for everyone? And the impact is more freedom, more responsibility. Uh, it's a big difference with the liberal. The liberal, they, they elevate the government and downgrade the citizen. We believe in people. <laughs> we, we, we believe in people. Okay. We believe in you, Preston. We believe in people that you have the faith, you have the ability, you have the dignity to do what you want to do. 
and to determine your own destiny. So that's a big difference. That's why we are, we are, we are preaching for a smaller government, for more freedom. And I think all the conservative, the social one, the other one, they can, uh, that, that, that it is a common ground from everybody, okay. for okay. everybody. Okay, one last question. There's been a lot of talk here about uh, the need to mobilize the next generation, the millennials uh, uh, in the future. And what, what approach would you take to try to make conservatism more relevant to the next generation, win their support, win their advice, win their involvement? I think it's the idea. Uh, I think it's what we believe in. I think they want a politician that is uh, uh, speaking for something that he believe in since a long time. Uh, look, uh, I'm going to use the example of uh, Ron Paul in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, he had the guy who has the most uh, young followers because he was saying the same thing for the last 20 years. So they want somebody who believes in something. And the young people, and that's what I said in my speech, if you want to have them with you, you have to have consistent principle that you believe in and, and, and speaking with them openly, with passion, with conviction, mm -hmm. telling to people mm -hmm. what you believe, and, and, and they will follow. If they're not coming to us right now, it's because it's our fault. We have to be there. We have to explain what we believe, and I think they will come.